Jonathan Edwards was a pastor, missionary, and perhaps the greatest theologian in the history of American Christianity. A graduate of Yale College, he became pastor of the Congregational Church in Northampton, Massachusetts, where the fires of the first Great Awakening began in the 1730s. Edwards' famous sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, and his account of the revival, a faithful narrative of the surprising work of God, are great literary classics. Near the end of his life, Edwards became president of Princeton University. The painting in the dome depicts Edwards with the distinctive architecture of colonial America in the background. At Oxford in the early 1700s, John Wesley, his brother Charles, and some friends formed a group known as the Holy Club. Their self-discipline and methodical approach to their faith led their fellow students mockingly to call them Methodists. On a stormy sea voyage, John witnessed the steady faith of some of his fellow passengers and attended their church when he returned to London. He began to preach the saving power of Christ as he understood it and soon organized his converts into bands for prayer and worship. In the painting, he is shown preaching to coal miners in front of St. Paul's Cathedral. John Leland is best remembered for his work among the Baptists in the colony of Virginia beginning in 1776. Leland and other Baptists strongly influenced James Madison, architect of the Constitution of the United States, moving him to add the Bill of Rights, which opens with a defense of religious liberty. Leland wrote, Every man must give an account of himself to God, and therefore every man ought to be at liberty to serve God in a way that he can best reconcile to his conscience. The American flag in the dome painting symbolizes the contribution that Leland and other Baptists made to the cause of religious freedom in the United States. William Carey is revered by Christians around the world as the father of modern missions. A poor journeyman shoemaker, he was blessed with a remarkable gift for languages and a desire to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those who had never heard. His admonition to expect great things from God, attempt great things for God, has become the watchword of the present day missionary movement. Carey spent 41 years in India, where he translated the Bible into Bengali and many other languages and dialects from the East. The lush greenery to his left in the painting is a symbol of his time in India. Charles Haddon Spurgeon was a dominant figure in the 19th century English Baptist Church. Called as pastor to an old struggling church on the south bank of the River Thames, he soon attracted huge crowds to hear God's word. In 1861, the Metropolitan Tabernacle was built, a symbol of church growth and precursor to today's megachurch. Spurgeon urged his students to remember that winning souls must be their passion and highest priority of their ministry. Charlotte Moon, better known as Lottie Moon, had a privileged upbringing as the daughter of a Virginia plantation owner. She offered herself for foreign missions in 1873. Moon soon learned Chinese, she suffered the starvation and deprivation common in China at the time, but held fast to her vision of developing a Christian school system in China. She inspired Baptist women of the South to raise money for famine relief, and the Women's Missionary Union was founded in 1888 as a result. The loaf of bread in her hands represents her tireless efforts to feed the hungry. William Joseph Seymour was prone to dreams and visions as a young man. When he lost the sight of one eye due to illness, 
the experience led him to accept a call from God to preach. He moved from place to place, finally discovering a home in Los Angeles. Preaching in the Pentecostal tradition, Seymour attracted great crowds with his exuberant calls for the gift of the Holy Spirit, and his new church soon moved to an old church building on Azusa Street. What made the Azusa Street Revival Movement remarkable was its unity. People of virtually every race, nationality, and culture heard God's call through Seymour. In the painting on the dome, a scene from turn of the century Los Angeles is depicted. Toyohiko Kagawa was an evangelist, Christian leader, author, social worker, poet, and pacifist. He brought his message to millions in Japan and around the world through his many books and speaking engagements in the United States. Kagawa was not born in the Christian faith. His father was a Buddhist, and Kagawa was first introduced to the Bible in his teens as a means of studying English. He learned more than the language, stating that the scriptures opened up vistas of a new and ever enlarging life. He spent years in the slums of Shinkawa, preaching and doing all he could to improve conditions for its residents. The cherry blossoms in the painting symbolize his native country. Each depiction serves as a testimony to God's power in the lives of vessels completely committed to Him.